uh, will be given by Horacio Sajion, and uh, he's uh, in the natural language processing uh, group, and uh, he will present uh, his project. much uh, Javier so I will present um, I will I am very happy to present uh, the project the collaboration that we are carrying out in the context of the Maria de Maetsu um, is a project to mine the knowledge of scientific publications uh, I am Horacio Sajon from the natural language processing group in uh, in the department um, so as we probably already know uh, we are overwhelmed with the amount of information, uh, scientific information available. As uh, researchers, we face a growing number of publications. So if you take, for example, the AC Web of Knowledge, it indexes over 90 million records. If you take, for example, PubMed, that is the uh, reference database for research in the biomedical science, it contains over 24 million publications. And if you take, for example, uh, if you are interested in the field of uh, patents, the European Patent Office has received since 2006 uh, over 2.5 million applications. Um, not only this legacy databases contain such amount of uh, scientific documents, but recent estimates indicate that a, re a new research paper is published every 20 seconds. That means that uh, this will continue to grow at an exponential rate. So this obviously poses uh, challenges for uh, scientists worldwide because we need to keep updated on new developments, on new fields that are appearing. We need to review papers, we need to review project proposals, write our own proposals, write our state-of-the-art reports. But with these uh, challenges, also uh, we have uh, a nice, of, uh, nice opportunities and these opportunities are, for example, the need to develop uh, advanced text mining and uh, summarization tools so that we can transform this um, textual information that has no structure, this text, into a rich uh, knowledge structures. And by doing that we can uh, help humans, for example, uh, obtain uh, uh, interesting answers to very challenging questions, so if the knowledge is uh, structured in an appropriate way, we can uh, create improved document summaries that will be different from what the author says about his or her paper, and we will be able to obtain relevant information from here and there in order, for, ex in order, for example, to write our state-of-the-art re report. So, um, also, if we transform uh, textual information into actual knowledge, we will be, machines will be able, for example, to reason over that knowledge, will be able to make connections between otherwise unconnected pieces of information, and will probably find synergies between uh, researchers and research areas, things that we have not thought before. So uh, the outline of the presentation that I am willing to present is as follows. First, I will talk about uh, this collaboration that we are carrying out in the context of this Maria de Maezzo initiative. I will, uh, this uh, doesn't start with this uh, Maria de Maezzo initiative, but we have some background information to present. So I will present the background for this project that is the Doctor Inventor Project. I will talk about a data set, an annotated data set that has been created in this project that is very useful to um, develop and to implement uh, several uh, machine learning algorithms, for example. And uh, I will talk about a text mining and summarization tool that has been created and is, um, the objective is to make it uh, more, um, um, more available and more rich um, in the course of this Maria de Maetsu collaboration. Then I would like to present two case studies that we have carried out in the past six months. Uh, one case study refers to the exploration of uh, semantically uh, annotated uh, publications and another case study uh, on summarization of scientific articles, in particular on computer graphic articles. Then I will briefly comment on related projects that we believe are similar to what we are doing here, but actually a little bit different. 
And then I will close with some contributions so far, summary and outlook for the future. Okay, so um, we decided to set up a collaboration uh, between um, uh, two complementary uh, but related research groups, the Natural Language Processing Group and the Web Research Group. So these are two groups that have um, uh, expertise that have some intersection, but uh, in fact we deal with uh, different topics. So the Web Research uh, Group provides expertise in manipulation of huge volumes of textual information analyzing this textual information, indexing uh, this uh, textual information, and uh, developing tools for appropriate search. And the TAN research groups provide expertise in transforming unstructured information in textual format in some rich and semantic representation. And the members of the um, collaboration, are, some of them are here. So we have uh, Francesco Ronzano, uh, Francesco Ronzano, Anna Freire, Diego Saez, um, Ricardo Baeza, Beatriz Fisas, Luis Espinosa, um, Francesco Barbieri, Ahmed Aburaet, and myself. So if you see them around, you can ask uh, particular questions about details of the project. Okay, so the, pro the background of this project is uh, an European project that started in 2014 and will end in six months. So this, uh, this Maria de Maezzo framework allows us to continue developing the tools that we have created and the data sets that we have created in this project. And it's a, it is a project on uh, the area of scientific creativity, where the main objective is to develop a support tool that will allow uh, scientists to discover analogies in otherwise unconnected pieces of research. But in order to uh, create this tool, you need to work with semantic representations of documents. So documents that not only the text, but some semantic information. And we know that uh, most um, uh, papers are available either in paper format or in PDF, although there are XML formats that are being uh, currently uh, ex exploited by some organizations such as Elsevier or Springer, for example, most of publications are available to us in PDF format. But PDF format is just a format. It doesn't provide any semantics on the content of the document. Okay? In a research paper, you will find things such as uh, the title of the paper, you will find the authors, you will find the abstract of the paper, you will find different sections, you will find tables, you will find, you will find uh, images, references and uh, also acknowledgements. All these are very important parts of a research paper that we want to exploit. But is, this is only the format of the paper. Actually, we are very interested in um, uh, the content of the paper and also on the argumentative structure of the scientific articles. In a scientific article, the author will try to convince you that uh, he or she is addressing a very important challenge he will try also to convince you that some past research has addressed this problem, but not in an appropriate way. And then in this paper, uh, this problem has been solved by the researcher. Also, he will point to some limitations. So understanding this argumentative structure is very important. To identify in the paper what is important, what is past information, and what is new information. So that can contribute to create, for example, better summarization tools. Also, uh, a paper is not an, an isolated unit. It has a network of collections with past research. And in research paper, people not only, scientists not only cite the paper, but they also have a strong feelings about what they cite. So they may praise a particular word, they may, may criticize a particular word, or may just mention a word because it's an established um, a paper in the field of research. Okay, so all these things are also important in order to understand the work that has been done by other people. Okay, so in order to understand how to deal with these uh, complexities in, uh, in the Dr. Inverto project, what we did is to create an annotated data set. So this, uh, the field of, um, the particular field that we work in this project is computer graphics. And we start with a set of computer graphic articles and with an annotation a tool that was developed by Francesco Ronzano, that is a collaborative annotation tool that can be used over the web, we have experts from different sites that annotate the documents. What type of annotations we add to, this, uh, to these documents? On the one hand, we add summaries. 
So we ask annotators to uh, go to each sentence of each paper and tell us how important is each sentence for a summary. So they will say, okay, this sentence is number five because it's very important to be included in a summary. This sentence is number one because it's quite irrelevant for being included in a summary. Then we ask them also to annotate in each sentence rhetorical information. So is this sentence the objective of the paper? Is this sentence mentions the hypothesis that the author wants to prove or disprove? Is the sentence the outcome, the main result of the, your investigation? And then we go to the cita citations and we ask the annotators to annotate the reasons why uh, this uh, citation has been made. Has been made to criticize the author, has been made to uh, point to an advantage of the approach presented by the author and so on. And since we have several annotators per paper, then we conciliate the annotations and we create a gold standard. It's the Doctor Inventor Annotated Corpus that is available for uh, research and that we have exploited in order to develop some of our tools. So based on um, the, the needs for processing scientific documents and uh, based also on available uh, software and uh, available peer review research, we develop a tool that is able to process, to do um, a lot of uh, processing and uh, enrichment of, of um, scientific publications. So I will not go, oops, um, I will not go into the, the whole detail but it is a pipeline of natural language processing tools that is able to identify citations, identify links between citations, is able to annotate sentences with rhetorical categories, uh, it's able to parse sentences in order to create rich semantic representations, and also is able to produce summaries of uh, different, um, at different uh, compression lengths. So I will uh, give uh, some details on some of the components. So for example, as I said, most of the publications that are available to us come in PDF format. So in order to transform the PDF into a rich XML representation, what we do is to rely in a, uh, in a service that is provided by the University of Manchester that is called PDFX. And this tool is able, for example, to give us some information about the title, the abstract, the caption, the different sections and the bibliographic section of the paper. Okay, so we selected this tool because it was the one that best fitted our purposes, it was the best performing um, uh, tool and also was uh, available uh, to be used uh, for free. Uh, in order to deal with citations, so we have several processes, so um, in, the, in the body of the document we try to identify all the citation markers and this is carried out using some uh, routes. We also identify uh, each line in the bibliography using some information that is provided by us by uh, the PDF FX, um, output or by some XML format that also can be read by our, our tools. In order to, to link the uh, actual references to uh, the line in the citation, we use some heuristics. And um, also another thing that we do is to uh, recognize that some citations, like this one, plays a syntactic role in the sentence. That is particularly important because you will say this author did this thing. Okay, so it's important for us. In order to identify sentences and words, we rely on the gate uh, framework. So we use uh, tools that are available in order to identify sentences and words, and we have adapted them uh, to the particularities of the scientific document. And in order to enrich um, uh, bibliographic entries with uh, semantics, what we do is to um, make use of several uh, web services that are available or some uh, web scratching techniques in order to collect information, rich information about uh, each of the citations. Okay, so in order to create uh, semantic structures out of the paper, we make use of a dependency parser. The dependency parser will be a parser that um, create, creates a, a specific dependency relations between words, and we use the mate dependency parser that is being used in several projects in our laboratory. It's a trainable parser, 
and um, we modify uh, this parser in order to be able to deal with uh, citations. So in the first example that you see here, the citation plays no syntactic role in this sentence. Instead, in this case, this citation plays a syntactic role. It's the subject of this particular verb. So it's important that we do that when we analyze scientific documents. Then we have, uh, we are interested in annotating sentences with a specific uh, rhetorical categories and for that we use uh, the annotated corpus that we have to train a classifier that is able to predict uh, for each sentence which is the appropriate rhetorical category of, uh, of the sentence or a default category that will be uh, none of the, of the five that we are interested in. Okay, also we deal with a co-reference, so try to identify in a paper which, um, which words refer to the same entity. This is particularly info important in order to create a knowledge that is uh, connected. So we have um, uh, implemented uh, the techniques that are being um, uh, reported in the Stanford Deterministic Co-reference co Resolution Approach. So we have two steps. One, uh, with rules and some heuristics to identify entities in the text. This, this uses linguistic information from the parser. And then we use a set of filters uh, in order to create links between the entities in the document. So in this way, we create a connected, um, uh, connected knowledge in the, in the document. And by doing all this, we are able to extract uh, triples that are our semantic representation. You can think of those as um, open information extraction triples of the type that are very popular now. And because we have also co-reference information, we are able to link different <coughs> entities with uh, co-reference information so as uh, to create connected graphs. In order to create summaries, we have um, an available tool in our uh, group that is called SUMA, and um, this provides um, functionalities to rank sentences, to score sentences, and to allow the ranking of sentences by a score, and implements a number of classical uh, summarization features. And I will tell a little bit more about that in the case studies. Okay, so the Doctor Inventor Text Mining Library is a library that is available. It contains extensive documentation, uh, contains an API to access the document model and to access different modules, and uh, incorporates a number of services that, um, uh, that are invoked in order to enrich the documents. It's uh, a, a pure Java and it's been implemented following um, the GATE framework and also incorporate summarization capabilities from the SUMA library. Okay, so in the Maria de Maetsu um, <coughs> project, what we do, so we have this, so we have Dr. Inventor and the supporting tools uh, within Dr. Inventor. So in the Maria de Maetsu uh, project, what we do is to add layers that will allow us to do more intelligent stuff. So uh, we add uh, um, a process to crawl information from the web, to bring documents, to store them locally. We process those documents to create semantic representations. We index them, and once we have indexed them, we can perform uh, interesting analysis, okay? So that uh, scientists could ask questions, could see um, uh, visualizations of information that has been gathered, and uh, can uh, write uh, reports, for example. Okay, so I will present two case studies. The case study number one is the exploration of a semantic uh, base um, uh, annotated document. So in this case, what we have done is to crawl the ACL anthology. The ACL is the Association for Computational Linguistics. It contains documents from over 10 years of uh, conferences, not only the, the Association, the ACL conference, but also associated conferences. So we have crawled all the documents from the from that site, we have also crawled metadata uh, available in BIP text format. And we have passed all, we have stored locally this information, and we have passed it through uh, our uh, text mining tools. And now we have documents that are enriched with uh, uh, structural and semantic information that we can access to. I will move to uh, this place to show you one demonstration. I hope it will work. So this is a document that has been processed by our tool. 
So it's a document, a recent document, so you can see already some uh, noisy data with embedded subspaces, embedding is uh, some very recent topic in, in computational linguistics. So you can look at the structure of the, of the document, so you have all the sections that have been identified. You can look at the uh, different bibliographic entries. The bibliographic entries have been enriched with uh, um, additional information from available services. You can look at the rhetorical classes that the system has identified. So for example, if I here click challenge, you will see there a sentence, however, this approach is prone to overfitting when a training is performing, is performed with a scarce and noisy data. So this is a challenge that the author has to address probably in his paper. And we have also uh, sentences that have been highlighted as relevant sentence for this paper. And these are not sentences from the author abstract, but from the body of the document. In addition to that, so we create um, representations, visual representations of the extracted information. So this is, for example, a representation of the abstract of this paper. So you can see that nodes represent uh, concepts, and then there are arcs, concepts or relations, and then there are arcs that uh, links the nodes by uh, subject-object relations. And you can see already some, um, uh, some nodes that contain co-reference information. So the, that's actually how uh, the links between the different uh, nodes can, can be done. Okay, so I think that for visualization I will close this now and I will continue with the presentation. So a second case study that we have developed within uh, this project is uh, the summarization of uh, scientific documents. In particular, what we have done is experimentation on summarization of computer graphic documents. Uh, and we take advantage uh, for this of the availability of the Doctor Inventor Corpus that I just, just referred before. So uh, in the Doctor Inventor uh, Corpus, so each sentence has been graded according to what experts believe uh, is important for a summary. And in addition to that, experts, once they have graded the sentence, they have written, three experts have written three human summaries from the information that they have found relevant, okay? So um, uh, we, what we did then is to design, based on peer review literature and, uh, and, and also some uh, intuitions about what info information might be important for a summary, we have developed a set of uh, features. Uh, and the features are these uh, seven, seven sets of features, and in, in each set there will be one, two, or more features, okay? So we have features for document structure, so the position of a sentence in the structure of the document might be important to assess its relevance. So it's a sentence that appears in the conclusion maybe is more important than a sentence that appears in a related work sec section. We have a vocabulary, so there are a specific uh, vocabulary that researchers use in order to highlight the information that they present. So they will say, for example, um, uh, our paper outperforms or our technique outperforms such and such approach. So this can be a clue of to point to important information. We use term distribution that is usually used to measure relevance of uh, paragraphs or documents in document collections. So we use them at the label of the sentence. We use rhetorical information, so the class uh, or the type of information that the sentence is reporting. We use centrality information. For example, you, we use an implementation of the LexRank algorithm that is a very powerful a summarization algorithm in order to uh, measure the centrality of a sentence in a document. Uh, and we use also co-reference information. So the fact that in a sentence there will be some entity that has actually a long life in the, in the document. So in order to, um, to learn to summarize, what we, uh, what we use is this formula where we put the features and we learn some weights. Uh, and we use a linear regression to learn uh, these weights. And um, the, during training, what we do is to score the sentence 
using the, uh, the values that the informants had given us. And during uh, testing, obviously, these uh, scores are produced by the system. Okay, then uh, having a score the sentence, you can uh, select the top n sentences, the top 25% of the article, the top 10 uh, percent of the article, or you can try to select as many sentences as the gold standard tells you to select. Okay? And then there are a number of evaluation metrics, text like summarization, that are being used to compare automatic summaries to gold standard summaries. Uh, and uh, the approach that we have uh, developed outperform, um, are very competitive, outperform uh, centrality based approaches that in general work quite well and also well known baseland that I use in evaluation of text summarization systems. Okay, so uh, related projects. There are many projects that deal with the scientific documents, so probably most of you will know TBLP, a reference library for um, information science and uh, computer science. Google Scholar that indexes absolutely all papers that are, are around there. Base, I see, and our minor other um, uh, portals that provide information on, um, on scientific documents. All these uh, tools are very useful because they aggregate information for, from authors. They have to deal with the problem of author identification and um, uh, to link records together if they belong to the same author. They also provide information on uh, citations and citation counts. Um, but what they don't provide is uh, many of them, or most of them, don't provide semantics. They don't provide semantics of the information that they have gathered. For example, they will not provide uh, the, um, uh, representations of the information. They will not provide information extraction of the, of the document. They will not provide different types of summaries tailored to the particular reader of the summary. Uh, probably the most uh, closest to our will be all these challenges that have been carried out in the Semantic Web uh, Publishing Challenges, uh, to, um, uh, an initiative that is uh, done in, uh, in conjunction with the Extended Semantic Web Conference, where the objective there is to give a proceeding of a document, you annotate it with semantic information so that you can um, then ask uh, or answer important questions about the evolution of the of a certain conference or a certain workshop. Uh, if you use ACM Digital Library, so you will notice that when you, are, you access to a document, you see here powered by IBM Watson. And IBM Watson is a tool that uh, performs uh, uh, text mining over massive amounts of information. So I think that we are on the right track to have such a project uh, here. Okay, so um, uh, the contributions that we have obtained so far, so in terms of publications, we have um, released uh, the Doctor Inventor Corpus and has appeared in the uh, Language Resources and Evaluation Conferences. Last uh, week, um, Anna Freire presented two papers, uh, one in the uh, workshop on bibliometric enhanced information retrieval and natural language processing. One is an overview paper of this project, and another is a participation in a text summarization challenge trainable citation and haste summarization, where we uh, obtained quite good results. Uh, in one of the tasks, we were second, and in another task, we were first. And uh, I was presenting also some work on uh, summarization um, in NLDB last, last week. With respect to software and data set, we have the Doctor Inventor uh, library available, uh, and also um, the summarization software. The Doctor Inventor Corpus is available for download. Uh, we have also semantically um, analyzed uh, rich collections such as SIGGRAPH and ACL, and they are available for visualization. Uh, as outreaching activities, so uh, as part of our plan when we presented the project, we said that we wanted to, um, to have a, um, a tutorial uh, or a workshop organized somewhere, and we have a tutorial accepted for calling. Calling is one of the main conference in our field of expertise and will be held at the end of this year. Uh, also, um, uh, Anna and Diego are supervising Asier uh, Aduriz, who is doing a master thesis um, uh, exactly in the topic of this, of this project and will be defended in, in September. Um, as um, 
so we work with text, so we will go from the text to the knowledge, but text is not the only thing that we should look at. So as many of you have mentioned before, so in a paper there will be references to software. Software will have documentation. Documentation will be in natural language. So we can use the natural language to interpret the software. So um, uh, papers refer to data sets. Those data sets will be also uh, linked to some documentation. And this documentation can be analyzed and enriched. So you can provide a semantic layer on the, uh, on the data sets. We only look at the text for the moment, but it will be very useful to explore uh, the complementary information like tables and figures. We can extract knowledge. We should be able to extract knowledge from them because they contain the key facts maybe about the paper. So the key comparison between different approaches. So this is very important. Also, if I present a paper, maybe uh, tomorrow I will go and present uh, some related talk and will be uh, featured in video lectures. So I will talk part, in part about my work. So uh, it is important that we analyze that that we analyze the slides associated to the presentations in order also to enrich the publications. And obviously there is more than formal citations as the ones that we do in the papers because um, researchers are very active in promoting their research in social networks such as uh, ResearchGate, Academia, and also on Twitter. So it is important that we look on um, ways in which we can exploit this information in order to enrich the publications. Okay, that's all for the moment. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions, I will be happy to answer. Any uh, quick questions? Yes. Yeah. Uh, very interesting work. I think it's really, really important, especially like if you take what you said in the medical field, for example, there's a huge amount of publications. But I think the most challenging there would be like, or the most interesting, let's say it that way, is that in a lot of publications you see tables with measurements of a certain parameter in a certain patient group. And it would be extremely useful in order to be able to pull that data. But I guess it's also very challenging mm -hmm. to kind of see which data belongs to which. Mm -hmm. Do you think your close to trying to do that or is this something like okay maybe in a decade we would be able to do that hope we won't have to wait for a decade but uh, uh, i hope that in the next round of project we could uh, continue this with um, incorporating this visual and uh, tabular information into the research is quite challenging we did some research before but was very quite preliminary i mean when i was not here i did some research on that it's very very difficult uh, because of the uh, characteristics of tables, there are different, very different types of tables and uh, understand the semantics of them is unclear. So you may understand the structure but not the semantics. So but the complement, the complementing the text, complementing the text, so where you describe the picture, complementing the caption information that describe the, the text and uh, complement it with all the text that comes in the, in the tables, uh, some, something could be done. So uh, maybe uh, depend, depending on what you want to do, if you want to be very precise or very have high recall, uh, the techniques may vary. But um, it's, a, it's a very important thing that we, we need to address. And related to that, also like looking at figures is really important because even yeah. if you now would go to Google Images and you yeah. type a thing, then you see already a lot of kind of figures from papers, but of course they're not useful in order in, in a context. Yeah, exactly. So how is partially your, your approach different from what Google is doing now or how can it be complementary? Okay, I suppose that we are very different from Google. They have uh, all the resources at their <laughs> in their hands to do these kind of things. Uh, but uh, we are concentrating on analyzing a whole structure, right? So no isolated images. I mean, we are not doing the image thing, but we will not be uh, able to analyze isolated items like images, right? So uh, it has to be taken in, in the context of the paper, yeah? So in order to take advantage of what is being said about the image in the paper, so as to enable its interpretation, yeah? But do you see a possibility to try to leverage from both ways? Because, I mean, this image-based approach is extremely interesting in some ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, obviously, your approach provides more information. But it would be interesting to reuse some of these things, no? Or do you see any way of doing that? Or do you say, like, no, these are total different no, no. ways of approaching it? I think that reusing stuff is what we do. So in our, in our approaches, we also look, we, we look First, whether there is a tool that is able to do something that is reasonable for us, 
that we can take as it is or take and improve it. So uh, any, uh, any tool that is already providing some analysis of uh, deep analysis of the images that appear in the paper and can give us some clues on some explanation that is given in the paper in order to make the link will be very useful. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it. I have a, a, a quick question. Yes, sorry. It's actually somewhat related. So one of the things I'm interested in is, uh, so can we query the scholarly record and ask a question, for example, show me all the publications that use the famous data set XYZ? That so should be possible. So for okay. the moment, so we are starting this, this project started, I mean, this uh, uh, project that started six months ago. So with the whole st structure that we, we have, that would be possible, actually. Oh, that's yeah. very interesting. It and would be possible software. to say, uh, show me papers that compare uh, part of a speech tagger X with part, part of a speech tagger Z and tell me uh, how they compare one another. So that would be very, very interesting to do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And what about paper recommendations? I mean, it would be nice that the system yeah. gives you. This is one of the yeah. This is one of the case studies that we want to address. So paper recommendation and also author recommendation. So for possible collaboration, so if you have a, an European project that you want to set up and you have your topic and you need expertise in some field, it would be useful to the system to uh, tell you, okay, this, this, this would be the appropriate persons to, do, to talk to. Yeah? So we are uh, very interested in those case studies.